Jerusalem was a shaking. Pentecost had arrived in an upper room chamber. They were drunk on the new wine. That Peter stood among them and he said, There is no doubt. This Holy Ghost and fire, it'll make you dance and shout. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Filled with the Spirit, he was born to prophesy. The prophet Jeremiah, he would lift his voice and cry. Praise God, praise God. We're just going to go on into what God has because the aroma is already here to get in the stream tonight. While we were praying, we've been here for a few hours. We all got off work and come in and had to refill the baptism. And I was just up here walking, and I know the Lord's been dealing with us about purification and getting ready for the baby to come. But some of you might know what I'm talking about, but some of you might not. But I'll do a little explaining. God was showing me sometimes when a mama has a stillbirth or a miscarriage, those are hard, right? You go through some struggles and you go through some pain. But when you finally get your baby that you carry all the way through, it's called your rainbow baby. Because the rainbow symbolizes promise. His promise is what needs to come forth. And we have to prepare the way. But before a rainbow can come, the storm has to come. But how many times do we get weak before the storm even gets finished? And we can't get to the rainbow promise because we can't endure. But tonight I feel like God is about to endure his people that we may be able to give birth to that rainbow promise, to that promise that can only come from the Father. God, we come to you tonight, God, humbly before you, God. God, I thank you, God, that this house is already set with an aroma, Lord. God, I thank you, God, that your power is already here, God, and you already want to reign upon your people, that we don't have to wait on the next step, but God, we're already river and we can just keep on floating down the stream. God, I thank you, God, that you're going to have your way in this house tonight, God. God, I thank you, God, that it'll be so thick in this place, God, that everything has to seal out, God. God, that we'll get on fire for you, God, and take those steps to complete where you want to take this house, God. But God, I thank you, Lord, that we can get our eyes up and spectating, God, and these expectations of the way that we think we need to see things done. You will do the way that you want to operate in this house tonight, God. And let us just be obedient, God. Let us cut our flesh, Lord, that we may be able to enter in to what you have for us tonight, God. Lord, I just thank you that we can put our day out of the way and we can continue to push in what was birthed in this house last night, God. God, in order for the people that didn't even make it last night, God, that they're just right on time to just jump in and keep on God, I thank you for your glory and your power and your aroma to rest upon your people tonight and completely just allow us to be obedient to you tonight, God. I come against every hindrance and everything that tries to shackle us, God. God, that we can cut our 
Praise the Lord. How many is ready to receive from God tonight? How many is desperate to receive from God tonight? Oh, yeah. I said, how many is desperate to receive from God tonight? If you didn't come in this house ready, you better get yourself ready. You better be ready because, I mean, I'm telling you right now, I told your pastor and I told a couple other people, I said, and, and I know I don't attend here, but I, 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 I recognize the glory of God when I'm in it. And I, when I walked up on these steps tonight, I felt the kabod, the weighty presence of God in this place. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. God is wanting to pour his spirit out on the hungry oh, people. Yeah. The problem is a lot of people aren't hungry anymore. Amen. And, 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 and I, I told your pastor, I said, it, it, it's time for a new wine that God is still wanting to pour a new wine. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, wine back out on the hey. church. If he can find a wine skin that can hold what he's wanting to send in its full strength, God's not wanting to tease you, and God's not wanting to taint you, but he is wanting to fill you. And your pastor's been telling me about what's been going on the last couple of, well, I guess 24, 48 hours here. And he sent me a text about that yesterday, and I'm sitting up at Hamilton Place. And we had just got served our food, and the Spirit of the Lord dropped a thought into me. And I'll, I'll share it real fast. I didn't even know I was going to do this. And I'll sit down. John chapter 2. It's going to sound really strange. I haven't looked at my wife. She looked at me strange. But that's all right. She always looks at me strange. It's recorded as the first miracle that Jesus ever performed, but it's the wedding at Cana of Galilee. It says they had joined together at this marriage uh, supper, this, this ceremony, and it says that Mary come to Jesus and said, we have no wine. That's right. And that's the problem with the church today. They come into a house and they celebrate covenant, but they do it without wine. And God's looking for a church that wants their wine back. But let me tell you something real quick. He, said, he looks at her, he says, woman, it's not my time yet. And then the minute he, look, he looks at her and tells her that, he says, now go get me six water pots and, and fill them with water. Well, well, wait a minute, Lord, you just said it's not your time yet. Well, first off, six is the number of man. Yeah. And if God can find six, or if God can find a man that's willing to be filled, yeah. he'll fill them. Well, I saw that water and it got me thinking. But check this out. He says, it's not yet my time. But then he begins to fill it and do the miracle. Wine is a sign of the Spirit. And wine is a sign of transformation. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? In, in my mind, sitting there in, in front of my food at Chili's. And he says, if somebody that knows me well enough will get desperate enough, I'll do something before it's actually time to do it. And in the middle of the chaos yeah. and churches closing down and churches empty nowadays, God can find a house in Rossville, oh, yeah. Georgia that says, I know, I know you well enough and I'm desperate enough tonight, so would you move earlier than you expected in the first place? And I say, let's hasten the presence of the Lord tonight and let's call on him tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. We come into a house ready we come into a house empty tonight, ready to be filled, God. God, we will be your water pots tonight. God, take and transform this house tonight. We want our wine back. We're not going to do it the way we've always done it anymore. We want you tonight. We want your presence tonight. Come and fill this place. Smooth the unmovable. Shake the unshakable tonight, oh God. Shatter our indifference tonight. Strip our complacency from us tonight, oh God. Break our hearts tonight for the things that break your heart tonight, God. And move in power. Move in glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put those hands together tonight. Come on. How many came to see the hand of God move tonight? Amen. Oh, come on. Who came to see the hand of God move? Come on. Well, Jerusalem was a shaking, Pentecost had arrived. In an upper room chamber, they were drunk on the new wine. Well, Peter 
stood among me. He said, there is no doubt. This Holy Ghost and fire. It'll make you dance and shout. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost and fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost and fire. Shut up in my bones. We'll feel Prophesy the prophet Jeremiah, he will lift his horse and cry. Be quiet, folks commanded, go home and leave us alone. But how can you be quiet when there's fire down in your bones? It feels like fire. Shut up in my bones, that holy ghost and fire. Shut up in my bones, it feels like fire. Shut up in my bones. And there's too much moving about Well don't tell me to be quiet Or sit down in my pew Because if you felt what I felt You'd be shouting too It's just my life Because I dance and shout They said too much emotion And there's too much movement about They don't tell me to be quiet We're gonna sit down in my pew Because if you felt what I felt You'd be shouting too It feels like fire Shut up and Oh come on church That Holy Ghost and fire Shut up in my bones It feels like fire Shut up in my bones
just because it's Monday night, just because I don't feel like praising, don't mean I can't praise. I don't know what you thought all day or thought all weekend, but I serve a chain breaking God. I serve a God that still baptizes with the real fire and the Holy Ghost. If you got to praise and want to let it out, there's plenty of aisle room where you are. Just I dare you, step out of your seat. Step out of your pew and let God be God tonight. Come on, church. Let God be God. Well, some people, they get offended because I dance and shout. They say it's too much emotion and there's too much moving about. Well, don't tell me to be quiet or sit down in my pew. Because if you felt what I felt, you'd be shouting to me. Because I dance and shout, they say it's too much emotion, and there's too much movement around. But don't tell me to be quiet, or sit down in my pew. Cause if you felt what I felt, you'd be shouting too. It feels like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost of fire. Shut up in my bones, feels like fire. Let's raise a praise tonight to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah, brother y'all. Oh, shout hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come on, say hallelujah tonight. Come on. should have been there when I prayed through church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too from the top of my head to the sole of my feet felt the spirit moving on the whole well you should have been there when I prayed through church was on fire oh, oh, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet felt the spirit moving on the whole well I got the river I got the river well I got the river Pray through, church was on fire, and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, felt the spirit. One more time. Well, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was somebody better move right now. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Shoot a 
been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the whole from the top of my head so that my feet I got the river. I got the river. I got the river. I got the river. Oh, glory. Well, if you don't believe I've been redeemed, follow me down to the Jordan Street. I step in the water. Water was cold. Chill my body, but I'm not so good.
If you don't believe I've been renting, follow me down to the Jordan stream. Stepped in the water, water was cold, chilled my body but not my soul. If you don't believe I've been renting, follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water, water was cold, chilled my body but not say, but I got the river. Somebody say glory tonight. Let me hear you 
people came in and the, you know how sometimes the Lord will speak through you and you feel like you're just praying but then the Lord will confirm it through the spirit and I've been feeling this since we prayed up here and the Lord spoke to me about what kind of mantle the people are wearing and I, uh, the, my mind went over there to in the book of Mark I believe it is the account of blind Bartimaeus when blind Bartimaeus got whole he cast away his garment. He cast away that mantle. That mantle was years of hardships put upon him. That mantle was years of people labeling him of being the blind man in the town. I'm sure there was others, but there was just this one man that really had something wrong with him other than just being blind. And old Bartimaeus over there, he's just a castaway. Let's just forget about him. Let's just cancel him out of our everyday lives. I don't even want to look at him because of the disgust that's upon him. Think of the years that he suffered of being blind. More than just being blind, but the mental battle that was in his mind. He wasn't blinded physically only, but he was blinded mentally, emotionally. But his spirit was still alive. His spirit was still awake. His spirit could still see just as clear as anybody else could. And he said, there's someone coming down the road. There's a promise coming down the road. There's my healing coming down the road. There's my restoration coming down the road. Tonight I hear the footsteps of the restorer. Tonight I can hear the footsteps of the healer. I can hear the footsteps of the deliverer. Tonight the Spirit is saying and God is saying I've come not only to heal you but to make you whole. But what the problem is when we get whole we don't cast away that same garment. Many people tonight I believe there's someone that's still wearing the same old garment. People's labeled you. People's tried to throw you in a spiritual trash can. People's tried to put you away. Say there's never going to be no hope for them. I don't care how much they pray. I don't care how much they sing. I don't care how much they preach. They'll always be a castaway. But what's impossible with man. Tonight, right now, is possible with God. Tonight, I don't know what to do. But I just feel like there's someone. I'm obeying the Spirit tonight that is still wearing that same garment of being labeled the blind person, come on, come on. The, the wrong person. Tonight, if that's you, I wouldn't wait any longer. I wouldn't tear you in my pew any longer. I'd come down and I'd cast that old garment off and put on the new garment. Because once God makes you whole, can't nobody say nothing about you. Satan's will can't prosper. Satan's plan can't prosper. And Satan's lies and the labels can't prosper. Tonight, somebody needs to cast the old cloak off, the old mantle off, because you're whole, you're free, and you're delivered tonight. Here you go, brother. Now in his presence, there is joy beyond all measure. 
and it's at his feet. Real peace of mind, it can still be found. I know that if you have a need, I know he has the answer. Oh, child, you are standing on holy ground. Say, oh, we are standing on holy ground. Oh, and I know that there are angels on Yes, we are standing in His oh, we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Amen. How many? thankful tonight that we serve a God that's more than able tonight. Oh, I, let me say that again. How many is thankful tonight that we serve a God that's more than able? What might be impossible to man, nothing is impossible with God tonight. I know oftentimes we think we've been plagued too long, that we've only been put back together but yet forgotten as long as you look to status quo that you looked apart that the church thinks you need to look. But I'm believing tonight that God's not only putting things back together. Look at your neighbor and say, God's not just putting you back together. I know we hear that all the time, that God's just going to put you back together, but I'm believing by the end of this night that a breath of God is going to enter in your body because can I tell you, I'm not just satisfied with the with the bird. I'm believing a fresh breath coming out. And I wish somebody look at your neighbor and say, there's a fresh breath. There's a fresh renewing. Lord, I just don't want to be put back together, but God, I need to pray. The whole Holy Spirit, that word ghost and spirit in Hebrew and Greek is the phenom or the ruach is the compressing of the air. It's something that is moving. It's the ruach, the phenom. And see, when we think spirit and ghost, it's literally the root word in the Hebrew, which is the, the phenom and the ruach of God. It's the compressing and the moving. See, when we often say, I'm filled with a Holy Ghost, and I tell you, there's something moving in and out. There's something that's pumping you in and out. There's something that gets a hold of the heart that begins to pump in and it pumps out. I wish somebody go ahead and praise him in this house and say, I'm thankful for a fresh breath. I'm thankful for an overflow. I'm thankful for the circulation. If God's been good to you, I wish you would just lift up your voice all in the house. Come on, say. If the, I, the word said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I wish somebody open up your mouth and praise ye the Lord in this house. I tell you, the spirit is thick in this house tonight. It is. Come on. And I tell you, I feel a sense of urgency in the spirit tonight. I believe God has set the atmosphere that he has confirmed in many different ways, whether it be from the different ministers that have came up and they begin to speak of restoration, reconciliation. They begin to speak of new birth, new skins, new things that are beginning to happen. But see, in the church, we always focus as long as I can patch you up, you'll look fine. But just know that the Bible said that you can't put a patch on something God's wanting to put something new in because what he will put in... It will burst at the seam. 
Is there anybody evidence to know that somebody just patched you up but the first hard trouble that comes up, it bursts the seam of it. Now you're back to zero. You're empty and wondering where you're going to go. But as I begin to pray today, I begin to hear the spirit of the Lord louder than I've ever heard it. And I believe tonight that I know that I know that I heard God that we will see a wonder in this building tonight. I, I, you all didn't hear me tonight. I know that I know that there will be an evidence of the Spirit in this house tonight. I'm here to tell somebody your shout did not deter me. Your run did not confuse me because I came to hear the wind and a fresh breath hit this place tonight because I'm believing that you can put on your put on with your same old wine skin, with your same diluted old wine. But I came tonight to see say that somebody's about to birth a baby and I'm not just satisfied with the birth but I got to know that the Ruah, that the phenom of God that we call the Holy Ghost gets in the middle of this thing and I tell you I want to see you come up out of the altar and take a, take a breath like you've never took before cause I'm believing somebody's about to come out of the womb and take off running into purpose tonight. I wish somebody say that that's me tonight. I'm about to take off running out to woo. I'm about to not just be put back together, but the Holy Ghost is about to feel me. The phenomenon, the compressing of God. But can I tell you when there's a phenom, when there's a ruach of God, there's a pressing on you. Oh, y'all don't want to listen. When we start understanding the Holy Ghost in oil, oil only comes by the press. It only comes by the crushing point. And when the Holy Ghost comes, See, that's the part of us, our spiritual ignorant, that we just say the ghost in the spirit. But if you know what that means, there's a pressing in and out of you when the Holy Ghost comes. Now we can understand John 15, that the Holy Ghost was sent to reprove the world of sin and make known righteous. Because why? There's a pressing on his body that's in and out. That Paul said be in season and out of season and reprove and reproach. Because why? The Holy Ghost will push you in the fire and it'll pull you out of the fire but it'll never just stay stagnated and people want to say I'm filled with the Holy Ghost but you quit breathing a long time ago we got a bunch of steel birth Christians in the church that got your little rattling tongue but you're spiritually purple and suffocating and dying it's time for a fresh wind CPR of the Holy Ghost and let the fire fall in this place I got anybody say I need a CPR are renewing of the Holy Ghost. I'm not flowing like I need to. I'm not breathing like I need to. I'm not just satisfied with rattling tongues and running. I need a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. I need a fresh move. I need something to put and pull me out of sin tonight. Somebody praise him in this house. When we think about the Holy Ghost, it's funny, Pastor Chad, how we can say we're a Pentecostal church, but you don't even know the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of us like Simon that's saying, hey, Philip, I'll walk with you with signs and wonder. But it said when them old disciples from Jerusalem came and it was Peter and John that came down and said, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you ain't finished yet. And we think because somebody mummers some tongue, they got the Holy Ghost. That don't deter me because it said it was fire before the tongue came. There was a movement before the tongue came. I need to know you can move out of sin and move into righteousness. I need to know there's conviction and there's still such a thing as holiness. I wish somebody say, I need a fresh breath. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Tap your neighbor say, fresh breath. If we know John 3 begins to talk about, that's a famous scripture. We ain't even got into the content, yeah. John 3, if we know the scriptures, Nicodemus and Jesus are talking. We often use that referral of a baptism of water, being birth of the water, being have to have a water birth and birth of the spirit to inherit the kingdom of God. It goes on to say what's birth of the flesh is maintained by the flesh. What is birth of the spirit is maintained by the spirit. 
And see, when we understand that, now we can understand that there's a lot of flesh babies in a church that's claiming to be spiritually Holy Ghost filled. But can I tell you, if you got a church full of envy, pride, can't come in agreement and come together, that's a flesh baby. Get back on the altar and get the Holy Ghost you say you got. Because that's the problem. People are don't know the Holy Ghost because all they know out of the Holy Ghost is your chicken dance and your run. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is power. Our demonstration, people get set free, dead things come alive. Hey, oh, that's why we got a generation scared of a Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, if people knew what the Holy Ghost was, they wouldn't just be blaspheming and hitting tongues out of nowhere. They would have a reverence for the tongues. They would have a reverence for the Holy Ghost. But people think, that, well, that's all the Holy Ghost here. Is somebody rattling tongues and shouting? No, 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 no. Shame on you. Get a fresh breath of the wind again and operating what God wants you to operate. I wish I had somebody that's willing to say, I need a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. I need something to feel me, baptize me, overflow me cause Lord not one more year will I birth a spirit a flesh baby but God I need something to be birthed in the spirit thy will be done thy kingdom come we can't advance a kingdom if we've never been born of the kingdom God, we can't advance a kingdom where all we got is people birthed out of denominations and man's thinking. We need a revelation of the Holy Ghost and of Jesus again in the church where we can be like-minded, come in accord and experience Pentecost again where we come in agreement and unity and watch the Holy Ghost turn this city upside down, turn this country upside down. But we gotta get hungry church to say I'm not satisfied with birthing a church of God baby I need a birth of Holy Ghost spirit filled washed in the blood in the name of Jesus born to prophesy lay hands on the sick raise the dead I will somebody come out of your complacency and say fill me up God When we think about often in this spiritual content, we all love Ezekiel 37. Dry bone. <laughs> I'm going to read it for content, and then I'm going to bring you a true enlightenment of what Ezekiel 37 is. We understand breath now, don't we? What the Holy Ghost is. Ezekiel says in the first verse, we're going to read about verse 10. And when you got it, go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word because I'm believing tonight somebody's just not getting put back together but a breath of God's about to hit you tonight. Uh-oh. You better get ready. I don't care what kind of donkey attitude you came in. My word said greater is he that's in me that's in the world. So if you think you're going to sit down on God, can I tell you something? I didn't come to play cute or play with your disease. I came to watch a Holy Ghost feel you. I'm going to call it out tonight. Verse 37, verse 1 through 10. It said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Look at that spirit, not your flesh. It said, In the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them around and about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. I mean, and I can say, Lord, I'm running on empty. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. And I ask you tonight, whatever your end, can it live tonight? Has the enemy made you think what you've been carrying is dead? But I wish somebody get bold enough to make a decree and say it's going to live tonight. Oh, Jesus, let me get through this. And it said, and again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto ye, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Faith coming by here hearing and hearing of the word of God and it said thus said the Lord unto the bones behold I will cause breath Oh Jesus! look at your neighbor say breath 
It said, and I will cause breath to enter into the bones, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, and they shall live. Verse 7, it said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. That's the problem there. Some of us get an order, but we want to be so arrogant, dogmatic, that you end up putting your opinion on it that when God is about to bring something alive. And I tell you, just because they're dried and broken don't always mean it's a devil. God just needs somebody to say, yes, that thing can live and a Holy Ghost can feel it. I wish somebody knew where I'm at tonight. It said, so I prophesied as I was a command. How many knows that the Bible said that? Sometimes that sacrifice... That obedience is more important than a sacrifice sometimes. Everybody's always talking about, well, this is what I sacrifice. I tithe and I don't smoke and I don't drink, but you ain't obedient to God. And God said that's just as important as your sacrifice. That's just as important as your fast. Because can I tell you, I don't care how many times you fast, fast for a nation. If you can't be obedient to God, God ain't going to use you. Because he needs somebody that can get saved down in the low of the low and say but they're going to live brother chat that they might look dead and dry some said they were possessed but I see a vessel that the Holy Ghost wants to fill I see something that's raising up like a mighty army but can somebody say they're going to live tonight look at your neighbor say they're going to live it says so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there, oh my. there was a noise. <laughs> oh my God. It said that when there was a noise, somebody say, get ready for a noise. Does somebody feel some wind hitting your neck right now? <laughs> there used to be an old time that ministers can say on the count of three, the Holy Ghost is about to hit a room and the wind would knock them all out on their face. And I tell you, I'm believing for a move of God tonight that you ain't got to worry who's filled. The Holy Ghost will do the job. He's just going to knock you all out. He's just going to go ahead and do the job because he ain't going to get no dogmatic person ain't deep enough to lay hands on you this time, sister. He He's about to put a Holy Ghost on you. He's about to slay you on your own and come up prophesying in other tongues. Because I believe you're going to live tonight. I wish somebody say they're going to live tonight. My God, because there was a sound. And I tell you, heaven don't operate in silence. And I tell you, heaven don't operate in silence. You got a lot of churches that like to scream and make noise. But how many knows when heaven makes a noise, things come out of graves. When heaven makes noise, blessings come up in the Opadian's house. And David said, we got to go get the ark. Mark chapter 2, there was a noise when Jesus was in the house. And they said, I got to take a paralegic man. I got to climb on top of the roof because I heard a noise noise. I heard something that began to shake and it will repel those that are sick in body. And I tell you when the church gets filled with a Holy Ghost and when the church makes a noise you don't need a Facebook share or a hashtag. Heaven's glory will start making noise. They'll stop on their bike. They'll stop where they're going and say there's something going on cause I hear a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Somebody pray Look at your neighbor go That's the sound of the wind I wish somebody go ahead and pray on your neck And just go I wish somebody the enemy's in your ear But I wish you would make a decree and just go Cause what the enemy don't realize That was the wind of change That religion went back out the door And the kingdom walked in Cause how many knows the wind that was mighty It 
was rough and it said it tore some stuff up and I tell you when the wind came on Pentecost it just wasn't any kind of wind cause that word mighty it was like a tornado wind my God cause when it came in it tore up some religious stuff it started rolling like a tornado and I wish somebody would let your whirlwind start moving and the fire start falling and say there's a sound from heaven look at your neighbor say sound from heaven well shut that but it said now hey my God I feel the Holy Ghost tap somebody say I feel the Holy Ghost uh, that's about three. I wish somebody say, I feel the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody go ahead and close your eye and just start breathing. Because the Bible said the Holy Ghost is the phenomenon of Ruha. Can I tell you, if nobody wants you, just like Elijah did on his mantle. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jezebel was on the run and he was scared and all messed up. But God had done showed up at Mount Carmel and took 450 bell and slayed them by the sword. But ain't it funny when you come out of the glory, the enemy tries to get loud. But see, Elijah knew that if I can cover my head, oh my God, hold on. I want somebody to catch this. It's coming together. Look at your neighbor say it's coming together. Have you ever known that the word mantle, that was a headpiece and a covering that they wore over them? It said that Elijah put his mantle on. He had to cover out all of his things. And he just started doing this. And when you understand the Holy Ghost, my God. You know that the Holy Ghost is the phenom, the moving and the pressing of the air. My God. See, sometimes God will let you put something over your head when you can't speak in tongues and you can't run a room. But the fact that I can go <sighs> means there's a Holy Ghost moving in me. And see, if I'll just listen, some of us just need to listen to this. <sighs> Look at your neighbor and say, just breathe. The enemy Jezebel's trying to kill you, but look at your neighbor and just say breathe. Because how many of those God said, I'm about to give you orders. Because when you recognize the Holy Ghost that's in you, that as long as there's breath in my body, like David said, I can praise the Lord. Because as long as I can fuster up a... It reminds me God's still working. I wish somebody say, as long as I can go take it in and take it out, that God is still working. I wish you would praise him in this house. It said so and the noise came. Look at your neighbor and say the noise came. And it said and hold a shaking and the bone. Ain't that about something? We all want the noise, but you don't want the shaking. Because Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 through 28 said there was of God would say his voice one more time that would shake everything that could be shaken but was left at the end of the day would be a kingdom of God that could not be moved. I wish somebody said they might have shook my boo thing. I might have lost the relationship. I might have lost my best friend. They might have shook that addiction. But at the end of the day, it was me and in Jesus and a Holy Ghost and I'm still standing and I got to praise him because he's been good. I wish somebody praise him if he's been good. Yeah. <laughs> and it said when hold and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Uh oh. There was no breath. <laughs> there was no breath in them. Now look at God. He said the sinews is the strength. So when God's saying, I'm going to take my strength, I'm going to clothe you. Now how many knows that what can wash you white as snow? There was a sinew of the blood. 
and the covering of Jesus and his righteousness. But how many knows it didn't end right there? Because if that would have been the case, there'd have never been a 50 days later on a Pentecostal day. Because he said, I put the sin you back. I put the strength back in your body. I covered you back in righteousness. But 50 days from now, I'm going to finish the job. Because I got to breathe back in them so that the army can come forth, that they can raise up in a tent. And no, I'm not just in show. I'm not just dressed up. But there's power in that name. Somebody say power. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It said the flesh came upon them, but there was no bread. Look at your neighbor and say it didn't end there. Look at your neighbor and say it didn't end there. Now it says in verse 9, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds. Every kinder, every na- he didn't just say come from the white folk wind. He didn't just say come from the Baptist wind. He said every four corners of the earth, I'm going to call forth the wind of the Holy Ghost. Because when I get done, look at your neighbor and say when he got done. It said that he began to prophesy. He called on the four wind, oh breathe and breathe upon these slain. I mean, and I can say to the Lord that there have been some things on you that the enemy is slain and you thought you would never operate in again. Y'all some liars up in this house. Let me go ahead and be honest again. How many this evening can say there's been some dreams that's been slain by the enemy that I'm laid up, dressed up, but there ain't no life that I've gone through church. I got the sinew of the blood and I got the coat of righteousness, but there's something not coming out. Uh-oh. But when he said unto this, he said that they may live. Now listen, this is why the enemy's worried when the church gets the breath back again. Look at your neighbor and say, the enemy's getting nervous. Because it said in verse 10, so as he prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Now listen to this. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't the end of the story though. It said, and then they stood up on their feet. Well, I'll let that sit for him. Brother Michael, you hear that? It said when the breath came in, that you might have been slain, but you're about to stand back up on your feet. Do you hear that, Sister Jennifer? You might have been slain, but the breath's about to come in, and you're about to stand up on your feet. And I tell you, where one devil come against you, seven are about to flee. Because when the wind comes, things get ruffled up. Can I tell you, don't be mad that stuff's ruffling up. That's just your stand to your feet moment. My God. But they stood up to their feet. And an exceeding, now you know Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly and abundantly through the power that worketh through what? Christ Jesus. Now in Ezekiel he said there's an exceeding, look at your neighbor and say exceeding. There's an exceeding great army. And I tell you why the, net, why the enemy don't want you to get a hold of what the Holy Ghost really is. Now I got anybody in this house that's kingdom minded ready to go deep. I know when we talk about revival you like and we had good worship and the Holy Ghost was in here. But I want to talk to some people right now that's ready for a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. Because there's some of us that's been sitting down way too long letting yourself be a dust man thinking you ain't worthy that you ain't called. But can I tell you who he called he glorified and who he glorified he justified. But it's time for you to stand up. Look at your neighbor and say stand up. Now you know why Ephesians 6 said having done all you can do just keep on standing now I know why Acts said for in the time of refreshing what you got to do you got to repent cause what happens when the Holy Ghost starts pouring you got to turn back to the cross and say I got to get back in alignment cause when the wind falls I want to be part of that army God don't put me on the bench cause I ain't deep enough to go to where you want me to go God 
God don't just let me birth it, but God let the breath come into my body. Look at your neighbor and say, let the breath come into my body. My God. You know, if we, most of us in the church, most of us in the church, we're happy for the bone by bone. Piece by piece. Look at God put them back together. Hallelujah. Bone by bone. Piece by piece. They're standing. Actually, they ain't even standing, Pastor Chad. They're laying right there. You were anointed enough to call them back together, but not deep enough to see it through. I'm going to call, you know that song, and the thigh bone connected to the hip bone. Somebody better get right. It said my feet started moving. I might have got the song wrong, but you know what I'm saying. And my feet, my hands, and they start moving, and we're like, praise God for the Holy Ghost. But can I tell you, even if you ain't saved and filled with a Holy Ghost under the right anointing, things can come back together. You can shout and look the part, but you can't be part of the army until the breath comes in the body. And I tell you, you're not, you're not confusing me because you got put back together. I want to see the breath come in your body. I want to see you stand up in the army. I want to see you walk out in attention. I want to know that you know that the birth was all the way through that the breath came in your body somebody better praise him and say it but it said bone by bone and here we are in the church we got people that don't know who God is running back to the world and we're like the devil's on the run you ain't as anointed as you thought you were look at your people still running back but can I tell you, they don't know who God is, but you do. Come on, somebody. And the only reason they're running back is because they're not ready to get the breath. They're happy with getting the bone put back together, but they're shutting their mouth when the bread. Oh, Jesus. My God. And I got some people willing to be on it. You're fine with the show. You're fine with the theatric. Everybody likes a good shaking. Because that says, look at me, Pastor Chad. Because when it starts shaking, I can be like, I ain't never got it made. Nobody loves me. I'm always bound up. I can't get victory. And then the shake comes and bones come back. And everybody's like, yes, you got it. But can I tell you, I ain't satisfied with that. Until you feel with a holy go, stand up in attention. Until I can see you breathe, utter another tongue, fire fall down on that day. I'm not done with you yet. I wish somebody say, I'm not done with you yet. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm here to expose the attack of the enemy that has worked in the church. The church is more happy with the sign of the shaking, but not willing to love them enough to bring the thing in that will set them apart, disciple them and make them fisher men up men. Cause they might get a pulpit and they might get a mic. You might leave some people out of your church. They might not need to call your number on a midnight hour cause you gave them the goods that can touch Jesus any moment, any hour. And I tell you, it's time to show them a man that'll never leave them and never forsake them. Just don't be happy with the show. But watch them washed in the blood and filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, filled in the Holy Ghost. Now we go to the important. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, Terry here in Jerusalem until you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, so why? You can be a witness unto me and the Samaritan unto Judea and the outermost parts of the world. And I tell you, Jesus told his disciple, you can't even go nowhere until you get the power of the Holy Ghost. Because why? If you're going to use my name, you better be able to 
tell a devil to walk out and not have to headlock them. If you're going to use my name, you better be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. If you're going to use my name, you better be able to speak to a mountain and it get on out the way. If you're going to use my name, you better be able to run a hindrance out of a service and don't have to ask it twice. And I tell you, we got people coming back over and over again for a healing. If I prayed it once, it's already done. Believe it. My God, it ain't the anointing of the man. It's the faith of the receiver. And I tell you, there was 10 lepers, but only one got their healing. I was only one. Believe of the power of the Holy Ghost. Only one. But It's thick in here. And I tell you, look at your neighbor and say, it's thick in here. And I tell you what's going on. The shaking's going on. And I tell you, I watched God put you back together. I saw you shout. But can I tell you, the birth ain't over, Joanne, yet. And I tell you, the birth ain't over yet, Christy. The birth ain't over yet, Shay. Because I don't need you to keep on having to go church hopping to get a breakthrough. If you'll believe the Holy Ghost in you, you won't have to get hands laid on you again. He'll do it the first time. If you're going to use that name, she done it. we need a reverence again for that name. See, that's what happens when you leave the power of the Holy Ghost in the back name. You got people just throwing that name of Jesus like it's any name. But when you know what that name is and what the power was sent to remind that, you'll be careful how you use that name. Because when I use it, something's got to move. When I use it, something changes. Don't somebody praise him in this house. Y'all better hold on to your seat. Because there's about to be a wind hit this church. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you better start praying right now. There's about to be a wind hit this church. And I tell you, it's not the anointing that can't do it. It's not the power of the Holy Ghost that can't do it. But if I got five people that can come in agreement and believe he can do it, watch him sling the door right off and watch your devil run back out that door. Because in the name of Jesus, I prophesy in the decree that you're about to burst something new. I decree and declare that God has set you free. I decree and declare that victim mentalities ain't got no play. I decree and declare. What's up to the I believe right now there's something about to move. I wish somebody say Jesus in this house. I wish somebody praise him like he set you free. Why does he say you got to be a witness? <laughs> now you know why Timothy says. He said that they'll have a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. Everybody can look like what would Jesus do. But not everybody's got what Jesus can do. There's a lot of us that can wear a WWJD bracelet. What would Jesus do? But I want to know, is there something in you that can do what Jesus can do? Because I'm not satisfied for having a form of it. Because he said, how do you know your mind? That these signs shall follow them that believe. That you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That you shall pick up serpents and you shall thread over scorpions. And I tell you today, you got a power that's working in you. That devil's got to run as soon as you walk in the room. <laughs> My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
How many and I can say I feel something right now? This is something powerful. First Thessalonians chapter 1, 5 begins to tell us. It says, for our gospel came not. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, for our gospel. I want you to read along real quick. Say, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Look at your neighbor, say power. power. Now listen to this. And in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. And in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance. As you know what the man, manner of men we are among for your sake. You hear people say, not every service is a healing Casting out devil, somebody getting set free. I beg a differ. The word said that when you feel with a Holy Ghost and you know who Jesus is, there's something behind and an evidence for your sake that that really is a man of God up on a pulpit. There needs to be an understanding. See what you got. And I tell you, how can a false prophet work its way in a church? Because the church done lost what made you the church. Oh my God. We done lost what made you the church. Can I tell you, the church weren't born. I am about to just preach all over somebody's toes. Can I tell you that the church wasn't born when Jesus come out of the grave? The church was born when you got some men that linked some arms that said we're going to tarry for a hundred and something that we're going to pray because what he said was about to birth a church that he told Peter that no weapon formed against it would prosper. And he said the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said I'm going to go somewhere with some disciple men that ain't just satisfied for an empty grave but remember the promise in John that said the works I do, you'll do. And greater the works you'll do. And I'm not going to stop until the Holy Ghost fail. And then what happened? They said they got to that time when they started with 500 kingdom-minded preachers. But somewhere alone at Brother Pastor Chad, some said, I'm worried they're going to steal some of my members. We can't leak hands. But see, there's some of us that said, there ain't your members. It's a kingdom. And when there's more, uh-oh. The Bible said where one puts a thousand Two will put 10,000. And see, the devil knew if I can separate them before the fire falls. See, the devil had that Jesus was sifting through the tariff and the weave. He was saying, what 120 are going to keep on pressing? Because how many knows you didn't know it, but Jesus already got your deadline. See, Pentecost was a feast that had been going on for hundreds of years. But how many knows the feast are God's season? And see, every Pentecost up to that moment was just a dress rehearsal. And why did Jesus have to send them back to Jerusalem? Because it was the season of Pentecost. That every people from all over the world would gather to Jerusalem and Jesus set the stage. <laughs> See, for 50 days they were praying and fasting. And some of them said, Pastor Chad, I think they miss God and it ain't really gonna happen. But how many of those the deadline's already here? <laughs> the deadline's already here. Can I tell you, 
There were 500 that went up. But my question to you, will you be part of the 120? Because the fire's coming, get ready or not. Because when the, the day of Pentecost had fully came, see, Pastor Chad, I don't believe they just sat there waiting on it. I believe they began to praise him for what was coming. I begin, they remember what David said. He that had breath in my body, praise ye the Lord. I believe they begin to prophesy before they knew what was going on. And then heaven said, I'm about to validate what's going on. Because how many knows God will make sure you can do it in secret before he'll pour out the fire? at your neighbor and say the deadline is here. Can I tell you Daniel, your deadline is here. Can I tell you Hunter, your deadline is here. Can I tell you Katie, in nine months get the due date ready cause the deadline's here. And I tell you right now that God's about to burst something in this place. I wish somebody praise him cause the due date is here and praise him in this house. coming to a moment yeah. that God is about to birth a baby. Yes. But the question is, are you ready to receive it? Come on. Right now, I know I call some out and I only do it under the anointing. There's four people in this room right now. You've been put together. You've been in the theatrical and you've been in the shake. But you ain't never got the breath. And unless you... I feel a water birth. You know, there comes a time... When a woman decides to have a water birth. And they sit down in the water. And they sit down in the water because why is that? God ain't going to birth your baby in something nasty. Because water is the washing and repentance. Why did Jesus have to tell Nicodemus what is birth of the <laughs> what is birth of the water and what? The spirit. My God shall inherit the kingdom of God. Can I tell you you can't birth the spirit while still hanging on to the mess. You can't birth the spirit in the back of your mind that God didn't totally deliver you and wreck you upside down. I want to know before you come up to this place. I know we did a baptism last night, but see, I'm believing that right now that somebody's about to walk into that water. That somebody's about to get in that water. And the enemy thinks, oh, it's just going to be the same thing. But let me tell that devil and the enemy on your back. That greater is he that is in me that is in the world. That already overcame the world. That I ain't got to question it. But I know what the Lord said. And his word said that if you'll sit in the water.
Y'all think I'm lying? Go ahead and pull John chapter 3 up. When Jesus begins to talk to Nicodemus, he said, how is it a man that was already born of a woman be born again? And Jesus begins to say, because ain't that how the word will never contradict itself? Because what did John say? He said, for I baptize in water of repentance, but the one that comes after me is mightier than I, that I can't even hold his shoe, that will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. And I tell you that in Acts chapter two, that when he said he gave unto the church daily, he said, and he gave unto the thousand and for the remission of their sin and the gift of the Holy Ghost was there. Why, why did they have to say that you got to baptize them? Because he said what's going to happen. Because the word can't contradict itself. That Jesus said if you want to see the kingdom Morgan, if you want to see the kingdom Joanne, you got to put yourself in the water. You got to sit on down. And you got to say baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Something just broke in this place. Now we can know why he said he gave unto the church daily. Because God said, you got to purify it before the Holy Ghost can come. That's why you better have the water ready. Because we're not going back. Because we're going to get saved in the water and filled with the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody praised me.